Well, recently, as major chip makers like NVIDIA have gone, so has the NASDAQ. Today's no different. Semiconductors leading the exchanges surge. Joining us now with more is Patrick Moorhead, more Insights Strategy founder, CEO, and chief analyst. Patrick, you know, so now we've gotten a bunch of these companies to report. You just heard the conversation with Dan Halley. Where, what have we learned about where we are in this AI build out cycle? Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, you have the infrastructure providers, that includes the chip companies, but also the infrastructure as a service providers. And, and the names behind them, people are looking for any, any hiccup that's out there because the gains have been so big in names like nvidia and amd and and broadcom they're looking for anything that might uh portend to the downturn and then another uh you know positive uh, uh data point comes out and everybody just jumps back on the train <laughs> uh last week uh i was on one of your shows and i really laid out a thesis that says the infrastructure build out is gonna continue uh, for at least another year and maybe 18 months. And that's driven primarily by the downstream FOMO or the fear of missing out from those enterprise SaaS providers. Uh, Meta, who clearly showed that they're investing uh, hardcore uh, because they they have to. If, if you are not investing and your competitors are, you could be set back potentially a, a decade here. Now, in the long run, of course, the downstream value has to be there. And I am looking to the enterprise um, soft, uh, enterprise software makers, uh, names like ServiceNow and, and SAP and Salesforce. Uh, and I'm also looking at the, the second tier of what I call AI infrastructure, uh, which we discussed a little in relation to Qualcomm and, and ARM even printed today, is the smartphone and uh, AI PC boom that I believe is coming up shortly. Recent market volatility has led to a surge in investor anxiety, leaving many wondering if the panic is justified. While market fluctuations are normal, several factors may be contributing to the current climate of unease. Economic uncertainties, such as inflation and the potential for a recession, are major concerns. Rapid shifts in interest rates by central banks aiming to control inflation can also create uncertainty, impacting investor sentiment. Geopolitical tensions such as conflicts and trade disputes add another layer of complexity, affecting global markets and investor confidence. The increasing influence of social media and the 24-hour news cycle can amplify market reactions. Information spreads quickly, and sometimes sensational headlines can lead to exaggerated responses from investors, further fueling panic. Um, and, you know, when you talk about some of those ServiceNow and, and some of the other enterprise software companies, what are the early indications of that ROI that they're getting? Yeah, so the early indications when the companies actually will directly talk about it, because not everybody is, for instance, Adobe isn't being very clear on on it. I believe service now is and Salesforce is as well. And even SAP's Christian Klein uh, did the drill down. With customers who are implementing, they are seeing some pretty staggeringly impressive results, like 50% improvement in productivity, 20% uh, uh, increase in the amount of stickiness and revenue that they can drive with certain customers online. The challenge now is to get more people doing more, getting them beyond these uh, uh, POCs or trials and rolling it out to the masses. Uh, we know that enterprises are typically slower than let's say uh, consumers. And, and then the, the other side of that is consumers, you brought up Apple, right? With what we've seen and what they're bringing out with Apple AI. And uh, that in itself could could drive a massive run in everything related to AI. And on the the uh, Qualcomm uh, discussion that I actually had with Cristiano Amon, the CEO of Qualcomm today, he really talked about the next generation of AI smartphones. Uh, for instance, putting in uh, this new Orion CPU that mm -hmm. boosts performance, boosts AI performance. So. 
it's happening. Uh, I am seeing indicators that the downstream uh, effects are going to be there, but we do need to see acceleration over the next six months, or well, I think I people are going to get very edgy. Patrick, and it's interesting to hear you talk about the likes of ServiceNow, talking about the effects this is having on productivity, because then you hear this Upwork study that showed the people who are using this stuff in their work they don't like it. They feel it's not making them more productive and, it's, and they're having to correct mistakes. And I wonder what the risk is, is that there is going to be this bias on the part of the S enterprises. I've made this huge investment. I have to make it work, even if it's not working. Is, is that a risk here? I think it's always a risk with, with new technology. Uh, I mean, if we looked at PCs, we looked at smartphones, we looked at enterprise SaaS software, it, it does take a while and there have been some some fits and starts. Uh, the tech industry and enterprises have this ama amazing uh, coalescing uh, capability because you have uh, very motivated parties to make this work. And the great part of an enterprise SaaS company is they can make very quick changes uh, to all this. What the biggest thing that's taken so much time here has been getting the data estates uh, in in line, because unlike any other big tech thing we've seen, and even though garbage in, garbage out, and the data has always mattered, it matters even more with generative AI. The upside is there for the productivity, but also the downside and risk from a security and complexity and privacy uh, point of view. But I have confidence that in the next six months, the industry will be in a very good place downstream. Patrick, I want to circle back to where we began, and that's with the chips, because I got to ask you about NVIDIA. As Josh likes to joke, we're contractually obligated in every conversation to mention <laughs> NVIDIA. Not really, but it feels like it. Um, and obviously, it saw a big surge today on that uh, the catalyst of that note from Morgan Stanley. Um, we have to wait until the end of August to get those numbers. Do you think once again that the highest estimates will be blown away? Listen, I'm sticking to my guns here, and that is that uh, NVIDIA has at least another 12 months uh, uh, to run. Uh, we saw TSMC, where NVIDIA does all of their manufacturing. They're basically sold out through 2025 and into 2026. We just heard from Microsoft and Meta that, that they're putting the pedal to the metal on this, and all of this is goodness for NVIDIA. And by the way, it's good for, for AMD and it's good for uh, Broadcom and Marvell as well. Despite these challenges, it's crucial for investors to differentiate between short-term noise and long-term fundamentals. Market volatility, while unsettling, is often temporary. A disciplined investment approach focusing on diversification and maintaining a long-term perspective can help mitigate the impact of these fluctuations. Diversifying investments across various asset classes and geographies can reduce risk, while a long-term outlook helps investors stay focused on their financial goals, rather than reacting impulsively to market swings. In summary, while current market conditions might feel alarming, the panic may not be entirely justified. By focusing on long-term strategies and maintaining a diversified portfolio, investors can navigate through volatility with greater confidence and resilience. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first link in description. Click on it if you want to buy this NVIDIA keychain. I don't know if this is a collaboration, but NVIDIA in China has posted about this, and also McDonald's in China posted about it. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars, we don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left. How are you thinking about the ethics of something like this? You're unleashing this to developers, to graphics yeah. artists, but these are being unleashed into the world. Yeah. Do you think a chatbot like that, a, a very human-like visual chatbot, 
should say that it's a chatbot? What is it so human that people start mistaking it for humans? They're well, emotionally it's still, vulnerable. It's, to a it's still it's still pretty it's still pretty robotic, and I think that that's not a terrible thing. You know, we're going to stay we're going to be robotic for for some time. I think it we've made we've made uh, this digital human technology uh, quite realistic. But you and I know it's still a it's still a robot, and so I I think um, uh, that's not a that's not a, a horrible way. Um, it, it is the case that there are many many different applications where the human engagement is much uh, much more engaging uh, having a human representation or near human representation than a text box. Uh, maybe somebody needs companion or healthcare needs to advise um, somebody who is an outpatient uh, who had just gone home, uh, you know, helping elderly. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of ed uh, applications, uh, a tutor which to educate a child. Um, all these different applications are better off having somebody who is much more human and being able to connect with, uh, with the audience. That's interesting. Yeah. What I hear you talking a lot about today, uh, these are software developments, right? They're relying on your GPUs, but ultimately this is software. This is NVIDIA going further up the stack. Meanwhile, there are some companies, some folks in the generative AI space who are in software and cloud services, but they're looking to go further down the stack, right? They might be developing their own chips or TPUs that are competitive with what you are doing. How crucial is this software strategy to NVIDIA maintaining its lead and actually fulfilling some of these promises of growth that people are looking at for NVIDIA right now? Well, um, we've always been a software company um, and even first. And the reason for that is because accelerated computing is not general purpose computing. General purpose computing can take any C program, a C++ program, Python, and just run it. And almost everybody's uh, program can be compiled to run effectively. Unfortunately, when you want to accelerate fluid dynamics, you have to understand the, the algorithms of fluid dynamics so that you could uh, refactor it in such a way that it could be accelerated. And you have to design an accelerator. You have to design the CUDA GPU so that it understands the algorithms so that it could do a good job accelerating it. And the benefit, of course, is that we can, by doing so, by redesigning the whole stack, we can accelerate applications 20, 40, 50 times, 100 times. For example, uh, we just put um, NVIDIA GPUs in, in uh, GCP uh, running Pandas, uh, which is the world's leading uh, data science platform. And we accelerated from 50 to 100x over general purpose computing. Uh, in the case of deep learning, over the course of the last 10 to 12 years or so, uh, we've accelerated deep learning by a million times, which is the reason why it's now possible for us to create these large language models. A million times speed up, a million times reduction in cost and energy is what made it possible for us to make uh, general, generative AI possible. But that's, not, that's, that's by designing a new processor, a new system, the Tensor Core GPUs, the NVLink switch fabric, uh, is completely groundbreaking for AI. Of course, the systems itself, the algorithms, the distributed computing uh, 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 libraries we call Megatron that everybody uses, um, Tensor RT, LLM, those are algorithms. And y if you don't understand the algorithms, the, the applications above it, it's really hard to figure out how to design that whole stack. What is the most important part of NVIDIA's software ecosystem for NVIDIA's future? Well, every single one of, it takes a new library, we call it DSLs, Domain Specific Library. Um, in, in, uh, in generative AI, that DSL is called QDNN. Uh, for SQL processing uh, data frames, it's called QDF. And so if you go to SQL, Pandas, uh, QDF is what makes it possible for us to accelerate that. For quantum emulation, it's called QQuantum. Uh, uh, QFFT, we got a whole bunch of Qs. Uh, computational lithography, which makes it makes it possible for us to uh, help the industry advance the next generation of process technology, called coup litho. Um, you know the number of coups uh, goes on and on. Every time we introduce a domain-specific library, it exposes accelerated computing to a new market. And so, uh, as you see, it takes that collaboration, the 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 the. Um, uh, the, the full stack of the library and the architecture and the go-to-market and the developers and the ecosystems around it to open up a new field. 
And so it's not just about building the accelerator. You have to build a whole stack. I got to, to interrupt with a really funny story that happened recently. McDonald's in China. If you order a McFlurry, they ask you if you want a NVIDIA keychain with it, and it only sells for $20. But the problem is, they only made that available to less than 10,000 customers. So their NVIDIA keychain is already sold out, and it's right now in the retail market and sells for hundreds of dollars. And Elon commented on this, and he said that he had no idea that this was happening, and added, in that case, I will definitely have some just for you to know. The first link in description. Click on it if you want to buy this NVIDIA keychain. I don't know if this is a collaboration, but NVIDIA in China has posted about this, and also McDonald's in China posted about it. But anyways, in the next couple of years, this product might even sell for thousands of dollars. We don't get that many chances to buy rare collectibles like this. Anyways, find the link at the description and hurry, because we have just 100 pieces left.